I think Neighbourhood Watch would always advocate um, preventing crime, but we do that through um, connected communities and individuals speaking to each other. And we would maintain that the best way of doing this is to have conversations with your neighbours um, if you're concerned or worried, and that should be the first port of call. As has happened throughout the COVID crisis, we know lots and lots of neighbours have been in contact with each other, changing, exchanging contact details um, to support and help. And I think this is a continuation of that. Yeah, because this is the irony, this crisis has brought neighbourhoods together, hasn't it? It has, absolutely. I think that's been a, um, a real silver lining in what's otherwise has been an appalling crisis. But I think it's important we don't kind of, um, we don't change that, but we still maintain those links with our neighbours. And if we are concerned, to have a conversation. The best way we would think of having, beginning those conversations is to start them now, is to have a conversation with your neighbours today, tomorrow, you know, on your way to work, on your balcony, outside your flat, wherever, and just say, how are we going to manage? What, you know, what are you thinking? And how are you going to manage the rule of six? and just have those conversations. It's much easier to manage those conversations and those challenges when we're in contact with our neighbours. And, and not to go to the police directly? I think, if, I mean, this is different, obviously, if there's a, a major house party or anything else, then that's a different thing. But I think the advantage of organisations such as our own, like Neighbourhood Watch, are that we have close contact with the police. We work hard to develop relationships with local policing, and as the... Um, as your earlier piece said, there are differences in lockdown um, in different parts of the country as well. So having those links within your community to your neighbours, the local community organisations and the local police will be what helps make us all the best of this and about us all being responsible rather than going, oh, I'm not sure if there's six or seven people. I don't know what that, whether the next door's house um, is household is or that support bubble, but I'll phone the police now. I don't think that you know, be the first port of call should be to have that conversation and be linked into your community. Is there, is there much evidence that, that that has happened in the past? I think we, as an organisation, we've had lots of evidence where people have been very closely linked in with their community in a way that they haven't been previously. I think there's, there's been good evidence, not just from Neighbourhood Watch, but across lots of community organisations across England and Wales. That they, they, those, those links have been made and it's about maintaining those links. The, the difficulty always is, you, you only need one household to constantly flout the rules. They become very unpopular locally, and, and then, then they're, they're in target territory, aren't they? Everybody starts to say, Let, let's go for them. Uh, of course, there, there will always be a small number of, of challenging circumstances. And I think if that, if that was the circumstances that you just described, then I think a conversation with the local policing team would be, would be entirely appropriate. And it also depends, obviously, on whereabouts in the country you are. Of course, hence my point about being linked into your community and the local policing, the local policing team who will be aware of what the rules are um, and what the guidance is and will be able to help and assist members of the public uh, on that front. It can be pretty daunting, though, particularly if we're talking about trying to control a, a, a larger number of people than, than you are on your own, obviously. But a lot of people might say, well, that, that, that's all very well, go and talk to them, but, but I don't feel comfortable with that. What advice would you give to them? I would, I mean, I think that's the same situation as we've been in during lockdown and in other circumstances. When my, if anyone, nobody should do anything they feel uncomfortable or that they think might put them at some sort of risk, obviously, I think that's, that, that's a given. I mean, if that's the case, then it may be, it's possible to have a contact with other neighbours that you, that someone does feel com confident to have a conversation with. I'm not necessarily the neighbour that they're concerned about, but that's the, that's why we need to remain and be really positive about our community connections. Mm is there may, may be somebody else, in the case of Neighbourhood Watch or other organisations, it may be someone else that is able to say, oh, this is what we think you should do, and I, I can do some of that for you and take care of those people that are more vulnerable or more afraid. Mm. Do your neighbours know you're the CEO of Neighbourhood Watch? I, I don't know if they have. they ever complained about you? <laughs> I, I, well, not to my face. Um, <laughs> not that I'm aware that they're, they're, certainly my neighbours are, are aware of my role, yes. And uh, ju just a, a word about... about the, the worry people have. This is a, particularly when we're talking about people who want to get their families together, uh, and they they might say, "Well, don't be so nosy. I I want to see my grandmother. If it means we we get to eight or nine people, you know, a, a, a allow us to do that in peace in our garden." Why should neighbours complain about that? This isn't this for me. This is not about neighbours complaining. This is about us all taking responsibility. And I, I really feel, I mean, particularly around funerals and significant events, I, I really feel for people whose lives and these uh, significant events have been put on hold or have been challenged. I think it's really, really difficult. I mean, and that's why 
I'd maintain that you know we this is about us all being responsible. We know it seems like there's fairly good evidence that there is a high risk of a potential second surge, and that's something that we all want to prevent. So it is about us all being responsible, um, you know, for ourselves and our families. John, it's good to talk to you. John Hayward Cripps, CEO of Neighbourhood Watch. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.